Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, back in 2016, Nvidia launched what I feel is one of the best graphics card lineups ever, the Pascal series of GPUs. Now, included in the Pascal lineup are such legends as the GTX 1060, GTX 1070, and GTX 1080, as well as the beastly GTX 1080 Ti, a very powerful card that some people still use even to this day. I say some, but I actually mean quite a few. The reason being is that it can still handle itself in modern games without many issues. In today's one, I thought we'd take a look back at the 1060, 1070 and 1080 and see how they compare when it comes to running a handful of modern and popular titles. Here on this channel, I've been lucky enough to get to play around with all three of these cards. The 1070, on a personal note, has probably been my favourite card that I've actually had the pleasure to have put inside my PC. Now, I've also had experience with both the 1060s, the 3 gig and the 6 gig variant, but in 2020 I'd have to say that the 6 gigabyte card is the one that you want to look out for, as the 3 gigabytes of RAM on the 1060 3 gigabyte will probably hold you back in quite a few scenarios when it comes to turning those texture settings up and things like that. I remember at the time when the 3 gig and 6 gig cards released and everyone was like, no, the 3 gig card will be fine for now. Uh, maybe in the future you'll have to worry about it. And I think we're at that point now where you might have to worry about it. The GTX 1070 and 1080, on the other hand, both came equipped with 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Whilst that is more than enough, even today, there are a handful of games out there, like Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, that will do its best to use up all the VRAM that you have to offer. Now, in terms of our test setup today, I've actually paired all three cards with the Ryzen 3 3100, a four core, eight threaded chip from AMD, and one of my most favorite ones. It's quite a new, CPU, but it already has earned itself a special place in my collection. But without further ado, let's get into the tests and see how these cards perform. So I've just thrown up some generic gameplay on screen, and then I'll be discussing the performance figures as we put them up as well. So using the same cards that I used a while back in terms of the 1060 and 1070 meant not only that I didn't have to refilm them, but it also meant that I knew what I was getting into. I know and enjoy these cards and I would recommend both of these models. The 1080 on the other hand, well, my three fan, very loud gigabyte card I sold a while back because it was very noisy. I switched to the, what did I switch to? I can't remember. Might have been the 5700, which was probably just as noisy, but for the video today, I've had to borrow a 1080 Founders Edition card. Very nice cards, but they are a little louder than of course, third party cards due to the single fan. Now if we start off easy with Apex Legends, all cards should be able to handle this game with at least 60 frames per second using mostly high settings. If we throw up the figures on screen, you can see the 1060 averaged 88 frames per second, the 1070 117 and the 1080 came in with 131 FPS. Now this isn't exactly a very demanding game, but it's nice to see that it does run with over 60 frames per second on each card. The 1060 had a few frame rate dips here and there with a 1% low of 56 but again it was nothing that bad and I would say that this game is more than playable across all three of these GPUs. Now when it came to Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone we used the high settings or mostly high settings once again. This game looks okay you know even with slightly reduced settings. The anti-aliasing isn't brilliant but other than that, it looks fairly decent, and once again, it performed well on all three cards. The 1060 came in with an average of 79, the 1070 averaged 100, so a nice jump there, and the 1080 averaged 113, so not quite as big of a jump between the 1070 and 1080, but the gap between the 1060 and 1070 was certainly the talking point of this test. But that's not to say that it's not a nice increase from the 1070 to the 1080, especially considering the jump with the 1% low figure as well. Remember, it's not always just about the average. Now, Far Cry 5 is, of course, a slightly older title, but it's one that will run very nicely on all three cards, and it's a game that still remains fairly popular. It tends to be a fan favourite among you guys as well. I'm always getting asked 
to put this back into the benchmark roster whenever I remove it. So yeah, here it is, Far Cry 5 at ultra settings here. The 1060 handled it like a dream. There were a couple of dips here and there with a 1% over 58. So pulling ahead once again, as expected, was of course the GTX 1080, which can really still hold its own in 2020. Now Rage 2 is an interesting one. This is a game that I can never really predict how it's going to perform. With other games, you sort of get a general idea of how it's going to run, especially when you've tested a few other GPUs in the past and you know that on paper they should be similar. Rage 2 though sort of just does its own thing. It's always an unexpected result, but yet again, all three cards managed a playable frame rate at Ultra. The 1060 came in with 60 FPS and a 1% lower 51. The 1070 came in with an average of 79 and the 1080 came in with an average of 96. So with the 1060, you're cutting it close to that 60 FPS line if you want to get at least 60 frames per second but it is still doable and if you want to guarantee yourself over 60 fps in a game like rage 2 though then the 1070 would of course be the better buy but just like it was all those years ago it still is of course more expensive and the 1080 even more so especially at the moment when used prices are a little bit all over the place Perhaps the most challenging game for all three graphics cards today was Red Dead Redemption 2. We mentioned it earlier and how it likes to eat up all of your VRAM, but again, the results were fairly decent. The 1060 managed an average of 42 frames per second with a 1% of 37. Now we were using the balanced preset here, one of the balanced presets. You may have to adjust a few other options too. I'd recommend keeping MSAA off. I always turn motion blur off because it's in my opinion, annoying. And uh, yeah, the frame rate though, however, across the three cards was fairly decent. The 1070 couldn't quite hit 60 FPS at these settings either with 54 on average and a 1% low of 40. I did see a couple of drops here and there, but the 1080 managed a solid 60 FPS plus with 68 and 56 as the 1% low. So that was the best result as expected once again, but the other cards did put up a pretty decent fight too. Now Shadow of the Tomb Raider can also give GPUs a good run for their money. Here with the highest preset, the 1060 managed 53. If you wanted to hit 60 then, just like in all the other games, you could turn things down a little bit. But I decided to stick things on the highest preset under DX12 here, just to see how it went. With the 1060 then, 53 FPS was the average with a 1% over 44. The 1070 gave us a result of 74 FPS with a 1% over 57. And once again, then the GTX 1080 came in with a result of 91 FPS on average and a 1% low of 71. So again, this was a very nice result and I'd have to say that both the 1070 and 1080 in the majority of modern games can still handle themselves fairly well. The 1080 will obviously pull ahead and that is a decent option to look out for. However, that being said, the used prices of the 1080 at the moment have been pushed up quite a bit and it can be harder to find one of these at least in the UK for less than the price of say a 5700 from AMD which would give you more frames. In some respects it really doesn't matter if the card is doing well because if it's priced wrong then it may not still be worth buying anyway and as I've said the 1080 could be such an example because at least where I live well the used prices seem to be pretty bad. So whilst the 1070 and 1080 still perform very well and the 1060 really doesn't do that bad, you also have to think about the modern equivalent versions of these cards. For example, with the 1060, there's now the 1650 Super, which should give you similar results. The 1070 has essentially been replaced by the 1660 Ti. And in terms of the GTX 1080, well, the RTX 2070 or 2060 Super would also be a good alternative. So you have to think about the prices of those in comparison to the used cards. You also have to remember that when you're buying a card new, you get a warranty, you get everything that you would with a brand new card. And when you're buying one used, well, you don't know how it's been treated and whether or not it's spent most of its life overclocked. Now, I don't wanna to get too much into that because as you know, I'm a keen advocate for used cards. I think if you're buying from the right seller, you find a good place to buy them from, then you can have a long, and happy PC gaming experience with a second-hand computer part of any kind. However, you do have to be careful in buying from certain sellers. Always check feedback, things like that. Although nothing can stop you or nothing can guarantee that you're going to get a card that's going to last you very long. It's just worth checking out the 
prices of not only these used cards but how they compare to their so-called modern equivalents. You also have to consider any modern features that you might miss out on should you go for one of these older generation GPUs. I think No Pascal will remain one of my favourite ranges for a long time to come and I think the 1070 and 1080 are going to be interesting to take yet another look back at at some point in the near future, perhaps when we see the new generation consoles release, we've seen a few games come out on those, and of course they are either made or ported for the PC. How will this older technology then handle said modern games? Well, the only way to find out is to retest some of these cards in a couple of years from now. So if I remember, that's what I'll do. With all that said and done, well, I hope you've enjoyed this look back at the 1060, 1070 and 1080 from NVIDIA, three of my all-time favourite GPUs. Let me know if you want to see a comparison with any other cards. Perhaps we'll do one for AMD cards as well. Maybe the RX 570, 580 and 590. Maybe the 550, 60, 70, 80, 90. Um, but yeah, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Let me know what you thought of this video. Also, let me know whether or not you are still running with one of these old beasts. I know there's a lot of you 1080 owners still out there. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.